All right, everybody. This is going to be a quick one because I want to get ready for Tanner and uh, Amit, who are doing some live streams too for SoFi today. But I just wanted to quickly, I will not be going over all the details of banking and how they're performing. Uh, we'll, we'll get a read on some of that for their Q4 earnings here shortly and figure out whether or not they got gap profitability. But my focus is just going to be quickly walking through the visuals of, of their financial statements over the last several quarters and years and then comparing that real quickly to the chart and then looking at some of the options that are out there. I would I highly caution anybody to not look at purchasing options today if they do well. Uh, that is not how this stuff works. Real quickly, I am not a financial advisor. I'm a high school dropout who happens to do this stuff for fun. I got, I got rich a couple of years ago, about four years ago, by in, uh, investing and now I'm retired, have been for about four years, and uh, I'm a multimillionaire from doing it. But there's risk that comes with this stuff. And so if you're getting into options, learn about it. Don't do it the way I did it in 2008 and lose a bunch of money. Um, take your time, learn, and do it the right way and start with small amounts of money. Um, again, just be smart with this. You need to learn these tools. They can be helpful. They're scary because you can lose everything. But at the same time, they can give you really great asymmetric bets. And that's what I'm here to teach you. So just be wise, start small, don't be crazy, don't get greedy. All right, let's go. So first, one of the things I want to look at, revenue growth year over year, 27% for SoFi. That is such a beautiful number. Um, that's in the top left corner over here. I don't know if my cursor's showing, but whatever. We'll figure that out later. Membership growth, huge. Products growing. Galileo used by a lot of different companies in the industry. Revenue segments, again, look great. Ignore this one time on the net income. Outside of that, trend going up. Cash to debt looks good, sustainable. Actually seeing debt go down a little bit, but not, but revenue, uh, cash, not as much. Um, comparing total loan originations, again, great number. Average FICO scores, already high previously, but starting to drift now even higher. So they're definitely, they're, they're making it to where, you know, they're being, just, they're, they're thinking about who, who's uh, applying for the loan and trying to make sure that they're not taking on too much risk. And that is a smart move. Um, growth in banks. SoFi is way above the rest of these banks, these legacy banks. Um, let me see here. Anything else interesting? I don't think anything's standing out. A lot of retail interest in this one. But again, this looks great. This looks great. Now let's look at the chart and see how great that looks. That does not look so great. Over almost 1,100 days, we're seeing that it's, it was down 73% on Friday's close. That's actually gotten better. We're up um, we're up 10%. Did they release earnings? Holy cow. 11% almost. We're up 11%, guys and gals. That's a great number. Okay, so I'm going to make some money today. Um, anyway, so we're well above the FIB now. We bounce off this downward trend line. You can see that. We're above the dot 618. This is a trend-based FIB extension. Remember, don't use the retracement ones. A lot of people do that, um, but we're not looking for bottoms. We believe we found the bottom in December of 2022. We're looking to go up. My short-term targets are pretty modest. Um, and by short-term, I'm talking like the next quarter or two. Uh, it's a 45% increase. And again, we were already there in the summer in July. Uh, back up to this next FIB level at the at the um, one level, and that'll be around 1180, and then with potential of hitting resistance back over here, going up another 85% uh, roughly from where we were on Friday's close, and that would get us around 15 dollars. So that's my strike. Actually, is right in that range. So I'm trying to keep it simple, and that's what I'm going for. Um, so I got my dog pace in here. She probably has to go outside, but we're going we're gonna to rock through this real quick. So I'm going to pull up some options here real quick and show you what I have. Again, make sure that when you're looking at options that you're going here and you're looking at the options chain, you're going to pull it up. You're going to select the date I do out of the money because I like to get right outside of that target range. And then what you want to do is uh, look to see where open interest and volumes lie. You'll see here like, the $15 strike, which is what I happen to be in, that actually has a lot of open interest. And so that's a good thing. Here, one sec. All right. Shutting that door for now so I don't have to hear her pacing back and forth. Um, so that's a good thing. You want that because you want liquidity when you're trying to exit. I'm going to jump over here. We're actually just going to plug in what I have. I've got January 2026 20, in here. This aren't bad numbers. If we get to $22, which isn't even a new all-time high, 
you can see some asymmetric returns here going out to May of next year, June of next year. One a 172% move will get you 458. That's the kind of stuff we're looking for. I like usually at least a 3x multiplier to the underlying, and then I like a chart that's set up to give me that multiple to the upside. You don't you don't buy options going long for leaps when something is already running. That's just not smart. If something's up 400% and you're like, I should go long in calls, you're being a fool and you're just transferring your wealth to other people. So don't do that. Um, so yeah, let's take a look here real quick. So I don't know how many contracts I have. Oh, these are going to be worth so much money today. 2,450 contracts. I might have overbought. I mean, maybe not considering how much it's up. Um, my average price is was 0.91. And it was actually lower. I was in the red on these, but that could change real quick. So short term, again, I'm looking for that 11, 12 range. And then with potential of going to 15. So let's just see what that looks like if that stuff happens in short order. Um, <laughs> so I've got a total of 222,950 in this. And if we go up, like if we go up quickly and get to that 11, 50, 12 range, which, again, we're up over 11%, heading towards 12% right now. Um, that would get me $550,000 in profit, $600,000 in profit really quickly. So, again, we like this because it's a 269% increase off of a move that is 42%. That's that asymmetric stuff I was talking about in my videos that I'm trying to translate to you guys is that this is what you want to see. You want to see outsized returns uh, with, with reduced risk, or at least like if you're losing 50%, 80%, wouldn't it be nice to know that you can make, what, if we hit that, let's go back, if we hit the $15 level between like now and let's say July, let's say that these guys do really good and they hit that strong resistance, $1 million in profit off of 220 something thousand in cash, 450% upside, for 85% move to the upside. That's that asymmetric stuff I was talking about. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys. Anyway, I hope you, I, I, I hope you can get something out of this video. Dude, again, not financial advice. I would not be buying today. You buy when things are bleak. You buy when other people are running away. Unless you're doing puts. We can do that in some other videos because I do think that it would be smart for people with small percentages of their portfolio. I try and keep it down to like 5%, uh, maybe 10 if I'm really getting worried, to hedge their bets. That way, if the market all of a sudden takes a wicked turn lower, um, you can avoid losing a bunch of money and make it to where you you can buy that dip. And there's no no better feeling in the world than watching the market fall apart and being able to buy your favorite things. So. Definitely a thought to keep out there. So this will be a shorter one today. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, join if you want to to help support the channel so I can do more of this stuff. Uh, otherwise, just share. Just share these videos. And in the comments, let me know if you guys have any questions at all that I can answer. Otherwise, I'm going to get on this live stream with Future Investing and Tanner and also check out Amit and see, see how things are going and see start going through these financials. You guys have a great day. Bye.